that we are super happy to know that we have Oscar with us next year together with Lando. Uh, very exciting driver lineup. There's two reasons why we wanted to have Oscar. I think he has shown in uh, the junior categories that he's something very special and has a lot of potential. Uh, plus, I think also in terms of personality, I think he's a perfect fit into our team and uh, that should be the main focus of the news. Uh, in terms of uh, contract recognition board, to be honest, for us that was never a case. Uh, therefore, I guess it's better you ask the other party involved why they thought they have a case. And therefore, this is not really a, any, any surprise for us. It's important now we can, uh, yeah, look to the, to the future. It's important now also to focus at the same time on the final eight races of the season together with uh, Daniel and Lando. We want to finish this season uh, um, in, a, in a good fight with the Alpines. Uh, and then uh, we focus on next year. Uh, first of all, congratulations on, uh, on signing Piastri. But um, it's you've obviously put a lot of pressure on him. It's a multi-year deal, which is fantastic for a driver coming into Formula One. Um, you're putting a lot of trust in him as well, having a multi-year deal for a, for a newcomer in the sport. Yeah, as I said before, we wanted uh, to have him on board. He wanted to be with us, uh, so we are very, very, very happy. And uh, the way I got to know him so far, we got to know him. We are absolutely convinced about uh, his talent and about his uh, potential as well. Uh, I think uh, you know Oscar as well a bit. Um, he's young. He's uh, full of energy. He has the right amount of self-confidence as well, but at the same time, he's, he's very humble and he's aware of how big the challenge is for him uh, next year. I think we are a team that has shown in the past that we can, uh, let's say, yeah, deal very well or handle very well. Uh, young guys coming into the, into the sport and uh, therefore I'm looking forward to get going with him next year. Well, Alpine have said that they're, they're not going to appeal um, the decision of the, the CRB. Uh, so, so they consider the matter closed. They're going to announce their driver lineup in, in due course. But yeah, what, what are you going to get from Oscar you think that's, that's different from, from Daniel? Can I ask you, you know, how long it's taken to, to, to come to this decision? When did you decide actually that you were going to flip your drivers? Uh, well, regarding the decision uh, with Daniel, I think we have everything set uh, last week, and I don't want to go into this any anymore. There's nothing I have to, to add. Um, the focus now is simply to finish the season on a high together with Daniel. Uh, Daniel is fully committed to do that. We are fully committed uh, to do that as a, as a team as well. And then we switch our focus uh, to Oscar in the future. At, at what point does he become a McLaren driver? Um, the reason why I'm asking is, is he able to do a young driver test with you guys? Well, at the moment, it was important to announce today that he will be with us from next year onwards. Everything else is uh, speculation at the moment, and uh, we will announce our plans as soon as they are ready. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, he's a confident young driver. We, we know that. How do you think his skills will complement Lando's next year? That's my main point. Obviously, you've said that you've, you've had an eye on him for a while. We've seen his pedigree, but, um, you know, I mean, if you, if you look at this season, you know, if Daniel had been scoring on the, at the sort of same rate as, as Lando, you'd be ahead uh, of Alpine. Obviously, you, you need to get both, both your drivers um, scoring. Again, I'm far away from uh, putting any blame on Daniel that we are not in P4 at the moment. I know what we have to do on the team side. We need to develop uh, a quicker car and give this to the two guys. Then they can score higher up. Uh, that's what we are focusing on. Uh, but in the end, as a team, it's clear uh, what you want to have. You want to have two drivers that are able each weekend to extract the maximum from the package they get, while in parallel we try to give them the best possible package, because that's the only way uh, how we can, let's say, continue on our journey, moving towards the front again in, uh, in Formula One. And uh, we believe in Oscar. We have uh, Lando on board, uh, who has shown us he's one of the best ones in this is paddock. So I think we have a, a great setup for the future, and I'm yeah, simply looking forward to compete with these two guys. Since your uh, announcement with, obviously, Daniel leaving the team, have you seen a difference in Daniel, a, a, a positive, more positive attitude where he's relaxed and he can just go out there and have fun? To be honest, no, not really. Uh, I think uh, Daniel was always fully focused on the on the task, same on the, on the team side uh, throughout last year, throughout uh, this season. And I guess also when we look at Spa on the team side, but also on Daniel's side, as soon as the helmet was on again, he was... Uh, back to full focus uh, on driving these cars around the track. It's a quick movie that you guys are seeing uh, when driving around these tracks. 
And uh, yeah, I didn't see any or didn't recognize any any difference. Can I just ask, did Daniel know that that, that Oscar had signed the contract if it if it took place on July the fourth? Yeah, obviously. Don't go into any details of the conversations I'm having with uh, Daniel, but. Uh, throughout the, the last month, as we have said also last week, we always had an open and transparent dialogue uh, with Daniel on where we both stand um, in our partnership, and uh, that was important for me, and uh, yeah, that was good. I know you're a very ambitious team, obviously, and you've had great success throughout the past, the second most successful team in the, in the, in the history of the sport. Um, where are your ambitions? What are you lining up for, for, for McLaren being able to win, get on the top step of the podium again, Andreas? How far are you away from that? Yeah, as we have said, we have a clear plan in place of how we can eliminate the deficits that we are still having to the teams that are running in front of us and also some teams that are fighting with us at the moment. We know that we are still a young team after the major reset we did to the team in 2019. We know that we still need more time to be a top team, though the top team that we want to be. At the same time, it's very important to get our infrastructure projects finished, mainly the wind tunnel, the driving simulator, because these are the main development tools you have in Formula 1. These are the tools we are not having in the MTC at the moment in the factory or not, let's say, at the level that where, the, where the, the main competition or the top teams are now having it. And I'm absolutely convinced once all these projects are in place and once we are on top of all these projects also extracting the, the maximum from these tools also then in the development cycle that we have everything it needs in order to make this final step. Uh, that's still two or three years away. Uh, so I ask for some patience, but at the same time, we are obviously ambitious. We want to shortcut that journey as much as we can. And uh, together then with uh, Oscar and Lando, I'm convinced we can make this final step. You, you obviously think that Lando is ready to make that step of the, the senior driver in a team at such a young age. Well, I think he has shown already now with the steps he made also um, each year that uh, he definitely can become one of the best ones in this sport, in this paddock. At the same time, as you said, he's only in year four at the moment, which is actually quite positive for me because knowing that there's even more to come in the next years, which is normal, uh, for such a young guy, uh, yeah, it's a very positive outlook. Thanks, Andreas. I better let you go because the.